reason that I was speaking forcefully, let's say, or perhaps even somewhat angrily by the end was because not only was the free, the white noise generator. My name is David Lindauschu. I'm unwell. I need help. I need help. I just wanted to meet you. I'm unwell. I call my I hope that you up there. I want to be well. find the help that you need. My God, I want to know him better. <laughs> David, say a prayer for him. Yes, sir. Father, we thank you for the healing for him, salvation for him, restoration for him. God, right now, just come into his life, let him know that he's valuable to you. Lord, I pray that uh, in this moment that you would just begin to work in his spirit. Lord, we let him know that we're for him, we're not against him. That God, um, that he just can find healing, thinks that he's here, that you put him here in this moment. We pray this in your name. Amen. Hey, let's pray for David. Come on. Hey, put your hands for us. David. Hold on. Say a prayer for him. Yes, sir. Father, we thank you for David. Exams from professors like Gary Habermas here um, to face, and we uh, we just have to remember that, David. You know, we're older, we're set in set in life, and these guys are just coming up, and and yeah. um, and, and so you guys will all be in our prayers too. Let me let me tell you something. I think what you just saw is where a lot of you are, but David's just honest enough to cry for help. And some of you are at, are, are at a place, and this is, I think, why your book is connected with people. You're at a place where you're just looking for answers. No one ever taught you basic principles of life, basic survival skills. No one ever told you to make your bed or to show up and, and, and listen and learn. And, and then the dam breaks. And in those moments, I'd rather you be here in this context and in this community, because I can tell you from our community group leaders to our RAs to our RSs and to every student here, that we think God has you here for more than just an education, but for community. And hold on, don't clap, hold on. I, I want us to alleviate what God's saying in this moment. And I'll be the first to tell you in front of our distinguished guests that these rules work, but all of them stop short without the ruler, without Christ in your life. And, and, and we are here for that. We're here for you. I'm so glad that happened, <laughs> because I think it just elevates. David. Pardon me? It was a little hard on David. No, not at all. Um, why, do you think, why do you think men like that, and so many of us, are just crying out for help finally? Obviously, you just see this visible manifestation, like that's not conjured up, that's real. Why do you think that? Well, it's so obvious why people are in, like for me as a clinical psychologist, I've always looked at things, I think, in some ways from the opposite perspective of most, and maybe even most psychologists. I, it's never been a mystery to me why people are depressed. Mm. It's never been a mystery to me why people are anxious and unsettled. It seems obvious why they're concerned and, and hurt and anxious and unsettled. I, I think the mystery is how it is that we can conduct ourselves so that that can remain under control. I mean, people deal with very heavy burdens in their life, you know. You, you don't have to talk to someone for very long. Someone you might, might be thinking is doing quite well in the world, and, and, and sometimes people are. But you don't have to scratch very deep beneath the surface before you find out that they have a family member who has a serious illness or someone who is suffering through a economic crisis of one form or another, or, or who, there's some source of genuine tragedy yeah. one degree removed from them, if it's even removed. And most people, even as individuals, have at least one serious problem that they're dealing with. And so it's no mystery that people find it difficult to orient themselves in the world. And the mystery is, well, what can you do about it? And we do know what you can do about it. And, and you know, Jonathan Haidt wrote a book recently um, uh, 
no, I'm afraid that it's, uh, the name of the book has escaped me. It's about the college situation and, and the snowflake culture. And um, one of the things that he pointed out, along with Luginov, who's his co-author, was that if you're a psychotherapist of any sort, particularly a behavior therapist, what you help people do is to identify their problems. That's the first thing, is to yeah. confront what's there, the, the reality of what's there, in, 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 as bluntly as possible. And so you often end up, as a psychotherapist, talking to people about their array of problems. As, it's as if they're putting their cards on the table. And, and you sort out their problems. It's like, and no, they often decide that many of the things that are bothering them are not really that important. They can wait, but that there are crucial life challenges that present themselves to them. And they're not just psychological problems, although sometimes they are. They're, they're problems in life, right? Existential problems. And then what you do is you help people break them down into manageable units, let's say, strategically, and confront them voluntarily. You know, and, and there's an echo of that idea. There's an echo of that in, in, in Christian thinking, and the echo for that is to pick up your cross voluntarily, which is that you have an, you have a, a, an, an unavoidable mortal burden to bear in life. There's no escape from it except to directly confront it and to take it on voluntarily. And what's so fascinating about that, two things. One is that psychotherapists of every stripe understand that this is one of the primary reasons that psychotherapy works. There's no dispute about that among all the different psychotherapeutic schools, is that the confrontation of existential problems, voluntary confrontation, is curative. And that's really something. And so, and, 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 and the practical aspect of that is quite straightforward. It, 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 it also indicates, practical and philosophical, it also indicates to you that there's far more to you than you think, because it turns out that you have substantial problems, genuine, deep problems of malevolence and suffering, but that if you decide that you will take that on as your responsibility, that you can put yourself together psychologically, just the courage, and you can actually solve the problems. And, 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 and that seems to be true. It's, 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 it's not a naive wish. It, it seems to be well within our capacity. And I mean, that's part of the message, I would say, of 12 Rules for Life, is that dark as things are, there's more light in you than you know what to do with, and there's more light in you than you can possibly manifest. And